Hello again, friends, and welcome back to another Talk To series. Uh, today we are joined by a, a wonderful a woman, a, a woman who scored nearly, is it nearly 100 goals, Natasha, or did we crash over that line? No, nearly 100, still 99. Nearly, <laughs> nearly. So we are eager for the return of the of the women's game. I know the last time we had Natasha on, we were we were we were all geared and waiting for the for the hundredth. And um, when it comes, it's going to be a special moment. And Natasha, for those that perhaps don't know, just tell us a little bit about yourself, who you play for, um, and yeah, who you play for, and your position and and your journey into into where you are at the moment. Yeah, so um, I have Thomas for Ipswich Town Ladies first team. Um, I'm a striker. Uh, I originally came from Lowestoft Town, who now aren't a football team anymore, unfortunately. Um, so that's oh, really? where I live. Um, and I've not really been in the setup at all. Um, from when I was younger, I just played for Waveney. There wasn't really that much set up for me to go. My family didn't drive or anything, so it was quite hard for me to commute. But um, yeah, I played football all my life. I used to just go down the field and play football with my brothers, play cuppies and things. Um, and then I, all I wanted to do was play football, really. So then the opportunity arose by Ralph um, giving me a call to see if I wanted to come down. And um, I think it started off with me getting the trains down to Ipswich because um, I couldn't drive or anything. Um, so oh. I passed my driving um, license and then ever from then I um, drove down two, three times a week um, for training and games. Wow, uh, ninety-nine goals is, is is an incredible achievement for any striker, any any level. And wow, um, you you mentioned your your brothers there. Were they were, were they your first entry point, if you like, into into, into football, or, or, or did you watch it on the television? How how did you become a part of the football world? What, what, what was it, your brothers? Yeah, it, it was more my brothers, and um, they pushed me to play football because that's what they did all the time we just used to go down to field um so I didn't really know any different I was more I've got a sister as well but I was always hanging around my brothers playing football and things she was like the total opposite um but yeah no um it was definitely my brothers that got me into it um and I'm glad they did really absolutely well but what at what point did you decide yeah you know, this is this is something I really enjoy and I, I really want to go further with this was it when you started you know knocking it around them and they and they stopped wanting to play with you because you would be you were better than them yeah um so my brother he's about four or five years older than me so um his friends were obviously then older than him and they were like you need to start going higher up and things but um I think a lot of the things that held me back was the fact that where I live in Lowestoft, it's near to nothing really. So the closest is either Ipswich or something I don't want to say. Um, and then, Good stuff. yeah, so luckily um, I've been able to get myself down there and um, get into the mix with Ipswich. Yeah. My daughter, I was thinking to before we, we went live, um, or, or started recording she's she's 13 and i've been desperate for her to get into football and uh, just from a purely selfish dad point of view really um of having somebody i can talk to about it and everything how did you find being in the world of football as, as a as a young girl was, was there a lot of support was was there was there a lot of uh comments i know when i spoke to amy um for another video for international women's day it, it perhaps was it was a bit of a mixture. How was, how was it for yourself? I think the stigma of, oh, women play football was a lot more there when I was younger. Um, so people, oh, what do you do? Do you go to the gym? Because um, obviously I was quite muscular when I was younger so as well. Um, and I was like, no, I play football. And I was like, football? Um, so it was kind of like back then you didn't really, there wasn't much women's football around. And I think that's why there wasn't as much opportunities unless you were already in the mix within football when you were younger. So what's it like now for, for, for anybody watching, perhaps my daughter is watching, uh, what, what's, what's it like now, do you feel, as, as, as a woman in sport? Is, is there more for, 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 for young girls or could there be more? And if there could be more, what do you think could be brought in? I definitely think there's more opportunities for younger women now, um, especially from when I was younger. I mean, you see Ipswich Town, what they're doing themselves. You see all the under 21s coming up into the first team and, and they're at such a high standard. It, it's incredible. And it's really good to see. Um, I think you just, it's 
people would more want to play football I think and get into that and there's going to be so much more opportunities because the game is growing now and I can see that from when I was younger to now there's so much more opportunities and money getting put into women's game obviously it's not enough and we know that but um, as we say hopefully in time to come we will have the funding we need for the girls and women to be able to play to their full potential. And what's it, it, what's it feel like being a, almost someone at the forefront of that, that change? Because there is a wave of change, as you say. And is it, do you sometimes take stop and realise you're, you're a part of the forefront of the change? I think it's a good feeling. And then at the same time, you wish this would have happened earlier. So I say sometimes I look back and think, could I be playing even more higher level? Could Ipswich already have been in the WSL by now if the funding was there and the, all the coaching stuff? Because I feel mm. now more money's being put in and I think a lot of people want to know what Ipswich are doing and they definitely want to be involved. Yeah, absolutely. Because you've, you've had some fantastic attendances in recent uh, fixtures. I say recent fixtures, it, obviously they've been spread out due to the, the pandemic, but you were really getting some top top figures figures that even some some men's non-league teams would be really proud of or, or even wouldn't even get um i can't think of the figure off the top of my head but it was a certainly large number and right, as a player walking out to that you can just, just really see the change of the landscape and think this is this is really growing and going somewhere yeah definitely i think it was a season ago maybe two obviously because um last one was blocked out um yeah. I was just walking out and people chanting our names and it, it, it was kind of surreal um but now we're getting kind of used to it. it it's a good feeling walking out on the pitch with all the fans there I mean they I'd say they're a big part of our game now obviously at the moment they can't be there but we know they're watching at home if we can um, live stream it and things so yeah it's just hopefully we'll get back to those times where we can have the fans there because they are definitely yeah. a big part of our game and of course, you mentioned live streaming there. That that can play a huge part in growing the pop the um, the game because you know there's so many opportunities now to reach to reach new eyes. And where do you feel the women's game can get to? Because we've we, you know, we we hear a lot in the news, uh, equal pay being one of them, TV rights. What's 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 the next three, four, five steps for the women's game to really kick it on and bring it bring it further forward? I think at the moment, obviously, there's so much more sponsorships and like like the terrace that um, sponsor me. There's just so much more there now, and you can see the growth. I just think it just needs that extra push. Um, I mean, look at the when England was in the World Cup and things. I think because it was more publicised on TV, more people are wanting to watch and get involved. So I think the more of that, the more that it's just going to grow and grow because. Um, the players that I've come across or seen playing football, it, it is well apart from where it was when I was younger. Um, and that is just dedication to the women's sports now. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's probably the one and only time me and, me and my Lily have actually spoken about football was when the Women's World Cup was on. That was a daily thing where it was excitement. And it was, and, and that's what you want. It's the engagement um, of, of, the, of the young female fans, isn't it? And that, and that provided that. And Hopefully that's been a that platform which to build upon. And when you were on with us last time, we were previewing, I think it was the uh, Derby game, in fact, I think it was from memory. Yeah, it was, yeah. I mentioned Terry Butcher. Um, and no three or four of your own, you know, you, you didn't really know who Terry Butcher was. And, and I was saying before, before we started, he was a bit of a god to me. So who were your idols growing up? I didn't really watch football when I was growing up. It was very, I just always just went out and played football because I loved it. Um, obviously, you used to the, the big names were like Ronaldo or Messi, um, because obviously the game of women wasn't very. I didn't really know many women players when I was younger, so I think it was dominantly. I just watched the men football wet as and when I could. Yeah, absolutely. Were, were you were, were you a town fan growing up? Was it a town household or was it another club's household? Uh, I've never. I don't support anyone. I never have. Um, but um, my brother used to support Chelsea. My dad supports Birmingham, where I'm from. So oh, okay. I just kind of watch those games because of that. But I, I don't really support anyone, though. No, but you wear the club uh, and you love the club. And that's, that's the most important thing. And, and if you look in the, inside the women's game at this moment, who, who do you look up to? Who do you respect? Who do you, and who are your idols inside that women's game, I suppose? I'd like to a little bit of a wrong word, but who do you look up to and respect? 
Uh, as a team, I think as an individual, um, after playing the Man City, um, I think that is just where we need to be at, the goals that we need to strive for and professionalism as well, because they were so professional against us, they gave us so much credit. And that it was really good, to be honest with you, because sometimes with that massive gap between us, I know we, that should be a lot smaller than what it is, but they were, they were very good to us and they did make us feel more comfortable than they probably should have. But yeah, um, definitely Man City are one of the top teams. Yeah, and they say you can you can learn from adversity, and obviously that was a game where you you had some adversity, the result being one of them. What what did you take? What, what what were your main takeaways from that as as first an individual player, but also looking around at, at, at your teammates and your club? What did you take away from that from that game? This is where we can be, and this is what we deserve. Um, I think when we put pen to paper and go to train and work hard we're not working for the game on the weekend we're working for a game which is a month away or uh, three games away so it's just making sure that we're working hard whether we're playing top of the league next week or bottom of the league next week we're we're not playing for that get we're not training for that game we're, we're training for um, a game in three four weeks time wow so you're, you're you're building for something much bigger than just 190 i like that i've not heard that before i really <laughs> I really like that. No, that's really good. Yeah, you're building for a bigger project. Um, uh, is is coaching then, uh, or, or or management, something you're you're looking at a long time in the future? Obviously, your retirement. But when you do go uh, into retirement, are you looking at that side of the game, or you is that something you like to do? Yeah, definitely. Um, I had a Zoom call with Joe just speaking about, um, obviously, we, we had no idea when we were going to be back and things, but just speaking about the future, really, and what I want out of it at the club and maybe after the club. And I said to him, I definitely want to still be in the game things. Um, I haven't done any coaching or anything yet. Um, that was the dream I left when I left school, but it's just not come across at the moment. So I'd definitely be looking into that towards the end of my career. Absolutely. And um, recently, uh, one of the, the women's team's manager was linked with a, a league job inside the English League One, uh, AFC Wimbledon. Is that is that another sign that the, the game is growing, or or there were some people that said that, that that was actually disrespectful, and maybe that job wasn't as prestigious as it should have been. Did 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 what what what, what, what was your thoughts on on that situation? Mine does that all the time. Mine does that all the time. I'm surprised um, no, he hasn't appeared. I, I, it is. <laughs> Beautiful. Um, no, the, the game has grown. You can, <laughs> you can see the change of the growth. Um, even like the likes of Joe coming in. Um, he's such a high standard quality of coach. And even the coach that we've had previously, they all have been at Ipswich. Um, mm. And I think it's just now getting those steps up the leagues and things. Um, and it is credit to the club, really, for the coaches that they get in. I mean, like, um, Paige, unfortunately, has left us now, but she was a top coach and everyone respected her. And I think yeah. having that respect in the club for Joe and Paige, I think that is what helps us a lot as well, because not only do we want to work for ourselves, we want to work for our coaches as well. And that, I guess that is a big part of it as well. So, yeah, yeah it definitely is growing 100%. And Joe himself was 25 to 1 to be the next Ipswich Town manager. Obviously, that's gone to Paul Cook now. But um, it just shows where the game is going, you know. Uh, and it's really exciting time. And like I say, I really hope my, my daughter catches fire with it. And just from my point of view, I want to have something to talk to about football um, in the household. But Natasha, it's been a real pleasure to sit down with you. And um, I know you can't comment on, on any sort of takeover with the club or anything. But I was reading an article that I think... I think Brett Johnson himself wrote and where he was saying about how important the women's side of the game is. So, um, you know, potentially more excitement to come and, 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 and it's just an exciting time for all sport as we, as we leave, hopefully touch wood this pandemic. And, um, yeah, I can't wait to get that hundredth goal. Uh, tell the, te just tell the guys and the girls at home your next game. Cause we have had some announcements on the next game. Um, so tell us who's against and when it is and potentially that 100th goal we're going to come against. Yeah, so um, Villa Ricky, who are in our league also, um, is an away game on, I believe it's the 4th of April. So I believe we'll have everyone be back for a week's training and then straight into a game. So I think that would be quite hard in itself. But I believe that we've been working hard enough outside of the game to be able to put um, a very good performance on when we're back. Perfect. And one last question, because it's just come into my head and I, and I feel it might be a good one. 
to those watching that maybe are in sport as as women and have had knockbacks and comments um what would you what would your advice be to them if they if they were watching this today for me it's all about you don't worry about what anyone else is saying it's like i i on um social media and things i i don't worry what other people are going to think or like um i just post it for me and i think that's a big thing a lot of people post for other people rather than themselves so I think the big thing is it's about you. Don't worry about the other comments. Block those out and you'll go far.